Can your communication hinder you? That is the title of this episode. And what I will be very gracefully talking about is how sometimes we are put in conditions where we are acknowledging a certain game as if like there are certain values, so we are a certain somebody and we need to do something. And sometimes we communicate in ways that are unnecessary. So, for example, we get angry at someone for no reason. We sometimes are so tense about our internal realities that we let them uh, scream into the external. But at times the external plane is also here for you to help handle you, to give you clarity. Everything that is in your reality is actually here to provide you with an awareness that you did not have before. Because in your clarity, you have been that decision that decided to look at itself. Sometimes I've found, for example, I've communicated to people unnecessarily. Sometimes society and our view of social structure makes us think that we have to communicate in a certain way. Makes us think that there is only a certain uh, level of communication accepted. But when you really look at what is man, you see an emptiness there that is all the things he thought he was, but he realized there was more. You cannot be ignorant because you are seeing that your communication is valuable in its honesty, in its clarity. Clarity first begins in the mind of the seeker, at first being something that he's missing. It's as if life has not given him what he's looking for. And so he's still, uh, he's, his ideology is still based on external reality. It's as if what's missing is something that hasn't come into his experience or into his life or has had any relevance to his physical reality, which is the story in which you find yourself to be a person right now. We all entertain stories so that we can communicate one another, but we see that language can never fully give the experience of a human being, because a human being's awareness is beyond form. And that is the most crucial thing that needs to be studied, regardless of belief or disbelief. It is just something that the human being needs to constantly be aware and study the potential of a moment of existence. And in that study, you see that science is valuable only if you've kept your hands at a certain degree. After certain degrees, the intelligence is different. It's as if like um, the next step is not here. So the sciences are not applicable as an origination here. You see, science is relevant to this plane of existence when you when it is really real for you that you originated here. But when, it's, when that sense of origination uh, in, in, through a sincere uh, awareness of yourself to kind of see who you are will turn into really what your moment has to offer you. Every human being, whether you're looking in your phone to see what time it is or how late you are or how many messages you have, you will see that regardless of how much you look at something, there's all of existence looking at you. It's that we cannot just ignore life because life is here and it's communicating. It's like that moment where uh, that person who was doing the same thing saw someone do it differently, suddenly realized he had the ability to create a new moment. So every human being has a sense of new and it, it needs to be understood that your psychology must be like a pond, like a still pond. That's the, na that's, that's the only imagery that perhaps is needed to in a sense align your mind. What does that mean? That means when you are aware, you're like a pond. People could throw stones, but these ripples will fade and you will reflect the greater sky. So it's not that there's no anger after you realize existence beyond this dimension. It's not that you're suddenly free. It's simply that how reality communicates shifts because you're no longer the same terminal. You're no longer the same receiver of life because your reception has increased. And we all know that that moment where you step out of a basement and your phone gets signal is, one, is a wonderful moment because it's as if you have suddenly come back to a sense of awareness of now having contact. Your relationship with life has an external aspect which is what you physically do. So in other words, if this body goes and takes care of like nature and stuff. And there's an internal sense of nature which is simply your awareness to life. Your awareness to life is something which you are shaping constantly because you want a self, you want someone to be there. But when you get the Zen master's calm or that human being who had just gone through such flux of experience to realize the nature of life is what it is, 
interpretation becomes significant, and especially interpretation of other men. So it's not that science is not wrong. It's just that the reality of it is something in which it's, it's, it's every moment of existence has its own view. In other words, there is just certain symbols in which through association we have made into a law. But the law is the solid aspect of it because the principle is fluid. The principle can be applied to many aspects of life. For example, a man who, for example, maintains his physical system. And so let's say you health has suddenly become real. You're like, gosh, I've been given this body and I could, I could be working with my life process in a better way if I had this more capable, let's say. So you would realize that your health would really not matter on your ideas of health. If you're an unhealthy person, you got to have that honesty to be like, all right, my information is not helping me and it's not inspiring me. So you need to go inform yourself and take Einstein's advice, as he said, um, the same consciousness that, that created the problem, you know, it's not, it's not the same consciousness where the answer would be. The consciousness would be at, at a different level of consciousness, as Einstein suggested. So what that means is that you might look around at your life and see, oh gosh, I got problems, I can't handle things. But you will know that if you choose to get involved with certain aspects of this reality, those involvements will expand your view. The fact that you go through one relationship in your social life makes you more firm and capable to be a sense of, a sense of role in other social relationships. Let's say. So you will see that you're many people to many people and it's your awareness to how real it is for you that who you are. Because it's very crazy. It's like there is a reason illusion needs to be maintained for social structure to expand. We don't need everybody to just be like you know, just a transparent mirror. But even though that awareness is there, there needs to be such a conscious realization that your choices could never choose you. There has to be that awareness in which you realize existence has a meaning to you more than what any other person could tell you to believe in. And so, it's very important because many of us think that our reception of understanding and our sense of gaining knowledge is just based on external. And so this is where the mystic's eyes that are in love with the unknown become very significant. Because when you look at the, when I looked at the different types of human beings that we have here, I noticed that there are certain activities right now that if you do, it is actually helpful to how you're being maintained, right? However, there's some actions which you need to do simply to become aware of the space. So listen, it, it's like as if, if you are a design, you have an awareness right now to a certain range of reality. So you look around the world and it has a certain type of meaning for you. If someone asks you what the world is, like if a kid asks, you can explain it to him, right? But you will see at some point you cannot. Because we are experiential beings. We are not a machinery in that sense. We have, we're not just like a, a, an objective relationship. We are a, a, the awareness to all objectivity. We are that which has kept the subject there for it to sprout into greater forms as we become self-aware. We must realize that the dimensions of your mind is vast and so you require to establish yourself in your comfort of reception. What that means is that a lot of people go through life and I, 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 I certainly went into this sense of modality where I was thinking, what do, I, what do I need to achieve something? I was looking for a process, I was looking for a certain tool. And so I noticed that especially the engineer's mind is one where you do want a tool. You want something that could make you, help you to make that uh, product or whatever you're designing instantly. So I wanted a way out and I wanted a free ticket. So I looked around and I saw there isn't that many ways out. Because when I listen to another doctrine or dogma, or when I listen to someone else's ideology rather than my ideology, I notice regardless, regardless of how good someone is a communicator, you are choosing how real those words are. Similar to how you choose if you like someone or not. Because likability is, is actually your relationship with image. And so how aware are you beyond that sense? Because there have been times where I've, I've sought my desires in the sense of, let's say, sexual gratification. You know, you're just going towards this urge and, you know, it's as if the lion's hungry. So you, you, you see that there have been times where I have played games. I've played the games of this life. 
And so materiality has become not just my cage, but at times I thought I was only that, you know. But you see that the way you're involved in life as existence has an aspect to it which you don't know. For example, you might say you're depressed, you might say you're a failure or whatever, you might say you're a winner, but you will see a part of you is like, I am a winner, but then suddenly, but what else am I? It's as if that, that sentence comes into your mind once you say that you're something. So I noticed that we try in this external reality to shape ourselves and then as a really interesting shape, uh, have other shapes remember. But we need to understand we are temporal beings. So the value of your act is not in how much you're displaying yourself. You are, you are not, even though I use the painting metaphor a lot, you are not just an image here. You are a movement of life. And so a movement of life is significant beyond any language that could choose to measure it, beyond any aspect of <coughs> a holistic view choosing to, in a sense, be, you know, separate in a certain space kind of time continuum box. It's like, it, it was crazy because I was really trying to observe what space and time meant. You know, and if you really existentially observe these, these are profoundly deep questions because they begin to touch the surface of how you're looking at things. And so when you see how you're looking at things, it is simply your awareness that is a freedom that is only a moment, a glimpse, a vision. And guys, what that means is that I'm trying to explain it, but it's a bit, it's a bit still vague for me too. But I'm recognizing this, this, this idea that I have, how the nature of mind, the nature of the is simple, simply as to how everything has its own attraction. Because if you look at yourself, you will be attracted to looking at yourself. If you're alone, you will be aware of your environment. Wherever you are as a moment of existence, you engage. So sensory perception, it's very hard to look at your senses, for example, to observe your senses because it's, it, you, it's as if you're, you've been observing it since you've been awake. You know? So when you look at the plane, so when, when that moment where the pilot of consciousness has never heard the word pilot before, but is simply looking at the plane of this reality, that is just, he's just observing the nature of this existence. Yorchi finds that life is that which has introduced color. Once you allow reality to happen for you as simply as how a breeze hits you, you are no longer looking to... You're not looking for salvation. Salvation is a game for an inferior mind that has not seen the vastness of this reality. And what that means is that uh, you only want the fruit unless you've seen the garden and you've seen what's beyond the garden, you know? So we need to have the ability to transition our sense of intelligence from just uh, looking at things or trying to just be fruitful or good or trying to be successful to suddenly going back and being aware of its roots and also the branches. Because the way that I've noticed that mankind can tap into greater spheres of knowing, as I have termed, what these spheres of knowing is, is as if, if you thought you were the leaf, you suddenly realize you are the root, so the root is connected to every branch of knowledge, to every branch of existence. So it's actually in your awareness of your relationship with existence, there will be a transparency and a very natural and graceful emptiness that will give you a permission to look in a new way. And this is actually a self-communication. It is an aspect of your individual consideration working with an aspect of its very uh, collective archetype. So what that means is similar to how we can see uh, a good a villain and a hero, we can see that villain and a hero within ourselves. And these aspects of ourselves are in this flux of communication where they're trying to find themselves but they cannot, in which that the gaze of people is curious to their own design, that what I am interested in is simply what is calling to me and what I can hear. So my moment is my allowance of existence. Your moment is your allowance. How much have you observed this existential allowance? How much have you observed yourself and realized that you're alive? This cosmos 
is looking at you right now. And so do you want a grander audience? Can you have a grander audience than all that is? Because the mystic knows that he has not just renounced life. He has given himself the allowance to see himself beyond the limitations of his eyes. For our eyes are transcendent in the sense that they dissolve in one reality to have always seen in another. I hope that you remember that all that you require is within you. And what that really means is that your freedom never needed to question itself. Much blessings and namaste.